What's up, YouTube? ODST Journal back again with another Operation Trebuchet tutorial. And this week, guys, we're going to be covering how to use the Drake class Corvette. Now, this is one of the more complicated tutorials I'm going to show you, so we will break it up into three parts. The first is placing the Corvette and using its various scripting functions, or activating them, I should say. Then going into the Corvette and actually using those scripts. And then we will show off its uh, weapon systems here and show you how those work. So, to place it down is very simple. You simply need to go to Objects, Props, and then go down to Optray Corvette Objects. Now, you can choose to place all the parts separately. And, I mean, that's fine and well. You can do that if you want. It's not necessary, however. If you want a pre-placed Corvette, you simply need to select the bottom option. You want to see Drake Class Corvette, and boom, pre-placed Corvette all put together perfectly for you. Now, there is a small drawback to this version, which is that, well, it can be rotated like this. If you try to rotate it at an angle, say 45 degrees, it doesn't work out super great. So we're just going to do that and move it back here. So you cannot rotate it like this. You can do that with the individual pieces, but it is obviously a lot of work. But if you want to do that for mission, anything like that, that does work that way. Now, activating the scripts is pretty easy too. Now, unfortunately, by default, these scripts are not activated. And I will also say that the scripting and functionality you see in here is bound to change. This is an incomplete asset, and it is supposed to be getting updated with the next release of Optray, uh, adding in more functionality and stuff like that. So just bear in mind this may be out of date before too long. But to activate the drop pods, you go to basic HEV script, activate basic HEV scripts. Nice and simple. Uh, this setting here dictates how long the drop pods reload after being launched. So 60 seconds after launching the drop pods, they will refresh up at the top of the ship. So if you have multiple crews you're trying to launch, you can set this to a shorter timer if you want, or a longer timer, whatever you want to do. The launch time is how long after setting the launch that these will actually drop the pods out. And then that brings us to the Bumblebee escape pods, which we will activate as well. Lastly, we have the sides. Sides are west, east, independent, and civilian, reflecting the same sides we see in Arma. West being NATO and the UNSC, for instance. East being the Insurrection, Covenant, and so on. The Independents? Well, they're Independents. Um, by default, Optre doesn't have any Independent factions currently in except for the Police Force, but they're not much of a faction at this point. And then lastly is Civilian. Now, depending on which of these factions you choose, we'll choose by default who can access the weapons and stuff remotely through UAV controls, as well as who the turrets will shoot at automatically. So if you choose west and you spawn as somebody from the east, you're going to be shot at, or if somebody from the eastern faction approaches the ship, and vice versa, if you choose east for the ship and somebody from the western faction approaches, they will be shot at. So we're just going to stick with west for right now. Now, Going down to custom ship logo, by default, it is the UNSC logo on the side of the ship here. However, we can change that to several different logos. By default, there is seven logos included if you include the base UNSC logo. The other ones are all insurrectionist, starting with, oh, I spelled that wrong, starting with any logo one, and then going all the way up to any logo six. Now, this will not be reflected in the editor, unfortunately. You will have to go in-game to see those changes reflected. However, they will change in-game as long as you did that option correctly. So, that will bring us to our second part. So, we're going to go ahead and head inside to the ship here. Alright, guys. So, we are now inside of the Drake class Corvette. As you can see, we have started out and spawned on the floor. The reason for that is, is default Arma has a freefall animation that is set anywhere above 150 meters, your character will fall into freefall, and if you hit an object for long enough, you will stop, so thankfully you can get out of it once you're inside the ship. However, if you are above 150 meters, you will end up in this when you spawn in. It is unavoidable, and unfortunately there is nothing the Optree te uh, dev team can do at this time to fix that problem. But let's go ahead, let's get on with it. So we're starting off in front of the life pods, which we activated with our script. 
Moving forward, we open the door. We can see that the life pod has spawned in. With the script deactivated, there will be no life pod. Getting into the life pod, I've also got an additional scripting option through this for launch escape pod, which you'll see up in the corner there. Launching the escape pod causes an explosion around the door. The door despawns, and we are launched out the back. As you can see, the uh, doors on the Drake class are now gone. We are flying away in our life pod. And at this point, the life pod is pretty similar to how it works uh, standard way in the mod. Uh, there does seem to be slightly reduced fall damage at the very least with this, so you do get pretty lucky with it as far as taking damage. And as we drift away from the ship, you can also see that we have the Insurrectionist logos loaded up onto our ships there. Now we're going to go ahead and we will return to editor for just a moment so we can switch over and show off those drop pods. Once this loads in, you will of course once again see that we are down on the ground because of our height. So we'll get up. Now, as we find ourselves in the drop pod bay in the rear of the ship, you will see this panel here that says launch HGVs in 20 seconds. So obviously that was the default timer we showed off before. We can go to any of these drop pods and once that 20 seconds is over, the doors will automatically close and launch us out. Now I do find that at certain heights, the drop pods don't work very well, specifically lower heights, which I do believe I am at such a height now. Um, they tend to fall sideways for some reason and hit the ship. I believe this is due to part of the scripting, so you can see that here. Um, we will attempt to get out, which uh, we did safely get out of it, but unfortunately our drop pod did not fall. Um, I believe it's got something to do with the parachutes coming out. So if we spawn from higher up, we would drop out those parachutes would activate before we hit the ground and it's a much softer slower landing than the standard drop pods this does help avoid putting you through the floor uh, unfortunately as you can see this is not the right height to do it so you want to be higher up when you do the drop pods um, it's unfortunately a bit of a catch-22 with regards to the free fall animation but like i said the free fall animation is more of an annoyance you should be fine with that once it's uh, gotten and done. Now, uh, in just a short little bit here, this should respawn back in and be replaced with a new pod once that 60 second mark is reached. And as you can see, during that cooldown time, we cannot use the terminals. So one drawback is, is that if only one person launches ahead of time in front of everybody else, uh, everybody else will be stuck waiting to get into their pods and be able to use them. Well, you can get in but you can't actually launch, so uh, everybody will be stuck waiting regardless. Now, uh, with that being said, there is no sense in waiting around for this pod to uh, spawn back in, so let's go ahead and head into our third part, which is using the weapon systems. Alrighty, folks, and finally, that brings us to our last segment, which is using the weapon systems on the Corvette. Now, the Corvette comes with two weapon systems, the M910 point defense turret, which will automatically shoot at anybody nearby. Alternatively, if you have a matching UAV terminal, such as I do, so NATO to the west, um, civilian for civilian, so on and so forth, you can directly take control of these systems. So you can see we've got several because we have two ships laid down. However, we have the M9 point defense turret inverted in this case, which is the one on the bottom. By clicking on the turret, we have access to the turret, which is uh, both quite loud and quite devastating. Um, you can see we can zoom in, do everything that you would normally be able to do if you took direct control of the turret. Um, it can be destroyed, however, it does not have a destroyed animation or model at this time, so while it can be destroyed, you will not see that reflected on the model. Now, to release it, you simply scroll wheel and then release the turret controls. The Archer missiles are probably the trickiest part of this tutorial to actually get used to. Uh, in order to actually use the Archer Missile Pods, you need a static laser source of some kind, be that a remote designator, the AR-2 darter, or even a Pelican. So basically any sort of vehicle or uh, lasering capable uh, UAV can link that information. So let's connect to one of these. In this case, the easiest is going to be the uh, designator. So you can see here we are in the designator. 
and I've got us a nice little target set up. So we turn our laser on, and I like to range it. Unfortunately, because of the uh, AI in these, sometimes I find these things have a hard time to stay locked on and like to move. Uh, if you have multiple players, you can simply avoid this by having somebody else um, keep control of this and keep your target targeted. So, if we then go into our UAV terminal, you can see it is still lined up, so we'll switch over to our Archer missile system. So we'll go Alpha to Alpha 1-1. One, one. Now you can see we've got a little small cross on our screen inside of our box, inside of our current designator, which indicates where the laze is. Now, by pressing T or sometimes Control R as necessary to turn the radar on or activate and recognize it, you will see we lock on to that laser. We've got a lock. And we've fired our missile away. Now, the missiles are unfortunately controlled by AI, so the AI will launch more missiles on occasion. As you can see, the AI still sees that target, so they are choosing to lock on and engage with their own missiles. And the missiles will launch up into the air, similar to a javelin, go straight up from the ship, and then arc down on their target. Uh, in this case, absolutely utterly destroying the poor 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 vehicle and that guys is how you use the archer missile system and like i said this does work with pelicans and the 8r2 darter so you don't need to worry about carrying around a remote uh, designator obviously many units do use the darter and they do use the pelican um, this should in theory work with any vehicle that has the ability to relay sensor information to another source. So if a vehicle such as Pelican or anything else has that, it should work with those as well. All right, guys. Well, that is everything for the Drake class tutorial. Let me know if this helped you out in the comments below. And if you guys have any more requests for tutorials, anything like that, let me know. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.